In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to calculate the pH of weak acids and bases. In the previous video, I went over the calculation of the pH of strong acids and bases, and this has a completely different procedure because of the fact that weak acids don't completely ionize in aqueous solutions. So instead of just using the formula that says that pH is equal to a negative log, of the concentration of hydrogen ions, we need to first find that concentration of hydrogen ions. And to be able to do that, starting from a weak base or a weak acid, we have to take into consideration the changes that occur to reach equilibrium. So to walk you through the procedure, I'm going to use propanoic acid as an example. So that would be CH3, CH2, COOH and that has a Ka value of 1.34 times 10 to 95. Let's see it here. So the first thing you want to do is always write down the equation you have. So we start with the propanoic acid, which would be CH3, CH2, COOH, and that's going to react with water to form CH3, CH2, COO minus, also called propanoate, and the hydronium ion, H3O plus. So now that we have our chemical reaction written down, and we know the reactants and the products, we have to determine the value of the hydronium ion, which would be the same as the hydrogen ions, because that's what we need to plug in into the pH equation that I show here. pH is equal to negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. And because we're starting from a weak acid, the way we find that value is by using an ice table. So we have it here, ice, and I'll just rewrite the reactants and products on top of the table. So here we have O4 of the agents of the reaction and because water doesn't take any role in here we can just cancel it out so it can just be ignored so first we want to know the initial concentration and that's what the I stands for of propanoic acid and that would be 0 0.1 molar as I see it here and because we're just in the beginning or the initial part of the reaction, that means we don't have any product yet. So we don't have any propanoate or hydronium ion. Now the next step is filling up the C, which stands for change. And that change is going to be what happens from the initial part of the reaction to equilibrium. And because we're starting with the reactant, then we know that that is going to go down because we're forming more product. So if we say that the amount of propanoic acid that's going down is x, that would be negative x, and I'll put that in red, just so that we know we're subtracting that. That means that the amount of product that is going to go up is going to be positive x. And when we add that or subtract that, depending on what part of the reaction we're in, we get to equilibrium and we're going to get 0 0.1 minus x and then for the products we'll just get x. So now we know that the concentration of hydrogens is x but we don't know what that x is yet but that's where we use the value of the Ka that we have. So we'll use um, all these four parts of the equation and the Ka using the equation of Ka. So if you recall, we know that Ka is equal to product over reactants, and we know that our products are the propanoate and the hydronium ion, and our reactants are propanoic acid and water, but we ignore water. So Ka would just simply be uh, the concentration of propanoate times the concentration of hydronium ions over the concentration of propanoic acid. So Ka is equal to 
product of reactants and that will be concentration of hydronium times the concentration of propanoate CH3, CH2, COO minus and over our only reactant which would be in this case propanoic acid so CH3, CH2, COOH and I mentioned before that the Ka is equal to 1.34 times 10 to the negative 5 so we can plug that in here and then we plug in the values that we got from the ice table we know that the concentration of hydronium is equal to x same as the concentration of propanoate so that would be x squared and the concentration of prop propanoic acid which is what we had in the left of the ice table is the 0 0.1 molar minus x 0 0.1 minus x however because we know that our Ka is so small we know that we can ignore this x here because just a little amount of the propanoic acid is going to ionize in water so this this number here this x here will be negligible and that makes our calculations a lot easier so now we just solve for x and we'll get that x is equal to the square root of 1.34 times 10 to the negative 6 and that will mean that it's equal to 1.15 times 10 to the negative 3 and this right here is the concentration of hydrogen ions that we need to plug in into this equation the pH equation so let me erase this and we can do that the pH would now be equal to the negative log of our hydrogen concentration which was 1.15 times 10 to the negative 3 and we get a pH of 2.93 and that's the pH of the weak acid we had now if you started with a weak base the procedure would be pretty much the same let's say you had something like ammonia you'll be given the Kb of ammonia and using the ice table you'll be able to find the concentration that you need to plug in to find the POH and then you simply use the pH plus POH is equal to 14 formula to determine the value of the pH so it would just be one extra step that you need to do so that wraps it up for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and found it helpful. And also, if you have any thoughts or questions, don't remember that you don't hesitate asking us. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one.